Okay, so we're back today. Um, last period, we went over the solution uh, that's on the screen right now, where we were replacing a bad word with a good word. And so this worked, and when we ran it, um, you could see that it replaced crap with poo. Okay, that's fine. However, there is one deficiency in this program, and that is if you, it's a big deficiency. So let's go to, I'll show you what it is if I go to this, if I do it with uh, the built-in replace. So if I go s.replace, and so this is the built-in replace that function the, that Python has. And so if I replace crap with um, poo, no problem, right? Okay. But now, what if I replace it with something that has the original word that I'm trying to remove? So let's say the word scrap, or another, uh, another meaning of the word to fight. So if I do this, it works. It says I scrapped or I scraped in a scrappy scrapper. Uh, and, and that's perfectly fine. So it has, so the built-in replace has no problem replacing a word with another word that has the original word as part of it. However, if we come over here to our code and we try that here, I think we're going to have a problem. And y you can see why this is going to have a problem because here, while bad in sen, let's just run it and see what happens. Well, guess what? We're in an infinite loop. That's why we didn't see anything. In fact, if you want to, we can print sen right here before the end of the loop and even put an input uh, just to, st we're not going to do anything with the input. I just want to hit enter so that it doesn't fly off the screen before I can see what's happening. So one, two, three, four. Do you notice what's happening here, right? It's never going to end. But all it's doing is it seems like it's it's replacing this. So it right now it's going to try and find the word crap. Okay? And it found it, it'll find it right there. Okay? And what's it going to replace it with? Scrap. So just another S and the word crap again. So you'll notice what's happening is the number of S's keeps increasing. This is, this is called an infinite loop. It's never going to end. And it's a bug. It's a, it's a logic problem. And we have to fix it. So the reason why this isn't working, so I'm going to have to hit Control C to stop this. The reason why it's not working is because here we're saying while bad in sent. Well, the bad word's always going to be in there because we keep inserting or you know putting in this word scrap, which has crap in it. So uh, we're never going to get rid of the crap in the sentence. I know that sounds kind of funny, um, but how can we solve this problem? So I have another solution. And so let me fix this back to what it originally was. But the other solution is here. So I'm, I've switched to it now. And um, in fact, I think it would probably be a good idea for you to see both of these um, at the same time. So let me go here. And I can. Let's see if I can make both of these show up at the same time. Uh, let's go like that. And so now we'll go um, clean scent and clean scent two. Oh, no, drats. Okay. Let's just do one, and then we'll do the other one, I think. OK, so uh, I 
think this one is clean scent. Let's open up the second one now. Okay, so now you should be able to see both of them at the same. Wait, are they exactly the same? Did I open up the wrong one? Yeah, I opened up the wrong, I, they're both the same. No, they're not the same. Wait, are they the same? I'm having trouble with my eyes. Oh, hold on a second. I'm having trouble here. Clean scent and clean scent too. Oh, okay. Well, well, I guess we'll have to fix it. Um, so this is the fixed one, but let's go through and figure this out here. So this is this one should work. Okay, let's run this, and um, okay, I've got the so that works. I've got the enter the input there, so that does work. I scrapped in a scrappy scrapper. Um, and in fact, if I if I got if I just got rid of this uh, print and the input, um, now it should just have the output, and there it is at the bottom here. Let's take a look at the code, and let's see what I'm doing. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm actually creating a a new string or a new sentence and it's starting out on line two as nothing and then I am going in so this is an empty string then I'm going into the uh, while loop okay and this while loop you know it could be this one too I could say while uh, bad in sen now that might seem exactly like it was before. And that's true, so you say, okay, well, why is this working if it's exactly like it was before? So that's unfortunate. I thought I had my first one. I don't understand why my original problem disappeared. But anyways, um, here, or I should say my original solution, so here I'm doing the same thing. I'm getting the location of where the first bad word starts. Then I'm getting the location where the rest of the, the sentence starts. And I'm calling them x and y. Um, I'm not sure if that's, those are good variables to use. Um, so I could say here, I could say location of bad. Or I should say, how about bad location? Bad location. I'm not sure if bad location is a good variable because uh, how about I call it B location? That's better. So, or how about in, how about bad index? Okay, that says bind. Bad index. Well, uh, let's just leave it with X and Y. Um, then I am so here maybe we put comments then we'll go index of first occurrence of bad word in sentence okay and then this one is index of rest of sentence after bad word. All right. Now, notice here, I'm not actually adding, oh, I am adding three things, but I'm not adding the end of the sentence here. So what I'm saying here, maybe it's easier to see if I put some spaces in. So in terms of 
if I kind of did this here so you could see what I'm doing, if I if I went I crapped in a crappy crapper. So okay, so here's the the first instance, right, of the bad word. So in other words, um, new sen right now is nothing. And then, so notice what I'm adding to it. I'm adding sen up to x, so I'm adding this part. Okay, so This is I space, okay? Then I'm adding to that the good word, okay? Which is scrap. And then that's it. Notice I'm not adding, I'm not adding this part to it. And you'll see why. So at this point, new sen is, is going to be this plus this. So now new send becomes I space scrap. Okay? Then we go down and the next line on line 8 says send equals Y to the end. So now here we'll say send and now send becomes PED in Okay, got to move this over a little bit so you can see more more of it. There, probably that's a bit better. P-E-D in crappy and then so on. Okay, so that's the rest of the sentence. Notice line 8 basically assigns, remember this is where Y was, right? So why have I done that? Because now when I go back to the top, the last two lines are commented out, so they're not important and the line after that's not, the return is not in the, uh, see the return's not in the loop. So now if you think about it, it goes back up and it says wa bad and sen. Well, what's sen now? It doesn't include this part. It's only here. So therefore, it starts looking, is there a scrap in here? Or sorry, a, a, a crap in here? Yes. So it finds it right there. And so now, everything is based, so notice line five and six, they're based on the new sen, not the old sen, not the whole line, but only the rest of the line. So in this way, then this one will get replaced, right? And then once that's replaced, uh, new sen becomes I, oops, right? New sen becomes I underscore, I mean space, and then Uh, no, actually, it would be PED in uh, and then like that. So then, sen x is going to be um, let's see here. No, hold on. We got to back up. Just a minute. Let's back up. I think I'm going, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Um, so let's pull this down here. Essentially here, what's happening after that? Okay, so we go back up, bad is in send. Now let's find bad. So now this is index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, actually 7. Because there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, so that's 7 because we start at 0. Okay. So now um, we know what x is. So now y is going to be 7. Uh, plus um, 4, which is 11, 
So if we kind of move this over, x is going to be 7 and y is going to be 11. And then new sen is going to be equal new sen plus, so this plus sen x. So that means it's going to be this. And then this, PED right here, this is what I'm looking at, okay? PED space in, and then a space. But no, but no, but nothing after that. Then we're gonna add to that good, so it's gonna be scrap, so that's where we're adding good. And then we're going to change sen now, okay? And sen now is going to be sen from y on. So therefore, it's going to be 11 on, so it's going to be this part. So this is going to be py space and so on. You see, every time now, basically, we're, we keep adding on to new sen, and that's going to solve the problem. Now the last, the last issue that I ran into this problem with is here. I had to fix this error because originally when I, when I created the program, I wrote it like that. And so now if I run this, you notice it doesn't work. It says I scrapped in a scrappy scrap. But it's supposed to say er. There's a P-E-R left off at the end. And so I kind of thought about it and I'm like, why isn't this working? And the reason it's not working is because when I go up to line four, in the last part, after, after you've replaced all, um, so the last word actually is uh, right here. Uh, how come I can't write here? All right. So the last, oops, I'm in the wrong thing here. Okay. The last word is right there, but there's a P-E-R afterwards. That P-E-R um, is not going to get tacked on because the loop will end after there is no more crap in the sentence. Uh, I know that sounds funny. So therefore, returning new sen isn't sufficient. I'm going to have to add the rest of the sentence. which in this case is now sen because of line 8. And so therefore, when I run it, now it works. I scrapped in a scrappy scrapper, and the P-E-R shows up. Okay? So that's the solution to that. And um, I know this is, this is, at this point, it's above your uh, skill level. And so... You know, don't worry if you couldn't get this, but I just thought it would be uh, cool to see this, the proper solution, just like the built-in one. So let's leave this now, and um, let's go to the second assignment I signed last period, which was finding the minimum um, value. So let's go back here, and let's... Uh, I think I messed up here somehow. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Let's create a new, um, oops, let's create a new file here. And let's create a list. And I think probably had some numbers like this in there. And so, um, now obviously when you look at this, there's six numbers there. Humans can easily pick out the, the smallest one, and that's obviously, it's the two. Um, but, let's call this, let's write a function, and we'll call get uh, small, and let's send it L. But I want to say to you that it's, it's hard to think of a solution when you can see the answer staring you in the face. So what I'd suggest is, imagine that this 
list is instead of just six um, numbers, imagine if it's 600 numbers. What kind of a strategy would you employ to find the smallest number in 600 numbers? Obviously, you can't just look at it. You can't look at 600 numbers and go, yeah, I know which one is the smallest. It would take you a long time to even look at them all. So you have to have some type of a strategy. But if I was to give that problem to a person who is not a programmer, most people would be able to solve it. But in order to do it, you have to think about how you're going to do it. And the answer is, I would have to go through each and every one. So I'm going to have to, here, let me save this so we get some, uh, we'll call it smallest dot py. And so I'm going to have to uh, go through each number. So I'm going to have to go for number in L. And now I'm going to have to see if it's the smallest. Now, I, I can't, if the, one, the only way I can see if it's the smallest is if I compare it to something. So I could say if num is less than something. See, this is the part where I'm not sure about how I'm going to do. What would I put in here? And so if that's true, if this number is smaller than the, the smallest that I think it is, then I should maybe save that number. So obviously, I'm going to have to have a smallest number. But which one should I set as the smallest? And here's the trick that you're going to learn. And this really is a, a cool trick. Ready? I'm going to say that, I'm, I'm just going to assume right off the bat that my smallest number is equal to the first number. And this is very unintuitive. Okay, so L0, L index 0 is the first number. This is unintuitive. Why? Because, well, why should the first one be the smallest? It's probably not. But I need some number in the list to choose to start the comparison with. And, and what better number than the first one to start with? So this is kind of like a, an experience that you gain. It's a trick. And so I'm going to call it, you know, like, why not choose the first number as the smallest? to start with, OK? So in this point, now I, can, now I can actually put something in here. I'll say smallest. So if the number that I'm on is less than the smallest, now listen here, something's going to be funny. Because what's the first number we're going to try if we go for num in L? Well, it's going to be the first one. So it's like saying, is num less than num? That's obviously going to be no or false the first time through. But that doesn't matter. We could fix that later. But let's see what we should do if we're in there. We'll say, well, now if that number is smallest, let's say from the second one onward, then we should make the smallest number equal to that number. OK? And by the time this loop is finished, in other words, it's going to go through all the numbers, once this loop finishes, then, and notice my indenting here, I'm not inside the, the for loop, then I'm going to say return smallest. And so now, when I come here, outside of my function, I will print get smallest of L. And so let me run this, and it should give me 2. And it does. OK? So this works. Um, and you know, even if there is an, another 2 in here, it doesn't really matter. It's still going to work. Because 2 is not going to be less than 2, so it's, it's still going to, it's still not going to fail. Um, now as for that slight discrepancy, 
between saying, okay, well, why are you checking the first one when you've already set it to the first one? That's a valid question. It's not going to be a huge performance impact to do one extra check wh where we don't need to. But we could mitigate it. We could get around it. And the way I'll get around it is by commenting that out. And I'll say, for x in range. And now I'll say 1, starting from 1, going to uh, len l. And now, notice, so now I have to change things a little bit because now if, if, it, if, I, if I'm just iterating over x, which is the integers, I'm going to have to say lx and here lx. So in this case, let's just try it. And it still works perfectly. But I want you to understand the only reason I did this is because um, I wanted to iterate not from index 0, but from 1. So so because I'm already choosing the smallest as 0. Okay. By the way, both of them are fine. It doesn't matter if you do one extra check. Chances are the performance impact is that it's going to be absolutely negligible. So that's the solution uh, to the finding the minimum. Okay. See if you can modify this program now. Pause the video. See if you can modify it such that Instead of finding the smallest one, you're finding the biggest one in the, in the list. Pause the video now and give it a shot. OK, so let's figure out how to get, find the biggest number here. So what we could do here is let's just select everything, copy it, make a new file, paste it, save it as, uh, oh, in functions, let's save it as, um, biggest.py and now get biggest how about we just go get big and now um, let's switch back to the old way just for uh, example sake and there so now we could say get big but we don't want it to be less than. We want it to be uh, greater than. OK? And so if we run this now, uh-oh. Oh, right. I have an if statement there. I need a full colon. There it is. Number 9 is the biggest. So that was the solution to finding the a biggest one. OK? OK, welcome back. Boom, we've got lots of photos here. Our next little assignment is going to be uh, writing a function which will generate a set number of Fibonacci numbers. Question, what's a Fibonacci number? Well, here is, I've Googled for Fibonacci numbers in nature. And you can see that there are many structures in nature that follow the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, and in fact, you've got a little bit of an insight to it here with these numbers. But, the, but shells in the ocean, uh, sunflowers, acorns, the Fibonacci sequence is all throughout nature. The question is, so there's the... the the famous Fibonacci spiral. The question is, um, 
what is the Fibonacci sequence? Well, there's a good, there's a perfect example of it right there. So let's let's start up uh, a paint program, and um, let me show you what the sequence looks like. So the sequence, oops. So the sequence actually uh, starts with just two numbers, and they're the two basic numbers of all number systems. It's 0 and 1. That's it. So not, essentially, think of it as creation. You start with nothing, then you have something. The 1 is the something. Now what you do is you add those two numbers, and you create a th All right. Okay. I'm having problems with my... Uh, Let's start again here. So, okay, we're back. So, 0 and 1 are the first two numbers. And then when you add those two numbers, the next number is 1. Then you add the next two numbers, and you get 2. You add the next two numbers, and you get 3. You add the next, the la I shouldn't say the next two, but the last two numbers and you get 5. You add the last two numbers and you get 8. You add the last two numbers and you get 13. Okay? So that's how the Fibonacci sequence works. Um, and let me show you how it works in terms of like a, a grid. Okay, so imagine if I had a box one by one and then, well, so if I had a kind of a grid here, you can actually recreate the Fibonacci sequence. I don't know if I'm doing a good job here, but because I don't, I don't really have a ruler. But uh, this isn't going to work. It's just not. I. It's too hard for me to create a grid. Uh, freehand, and I'm, I'm not going to spend the time to do it with a ruler. But essentially, um, I'm trying to recreate uh, th this. Um, oh, now I can't. Now I can't scroll for some reason. Here we go. I'm trying to recreate this. It, oh, it passed it. Yeah. So I'm trying to recreate this image here, but it's not important. But if you can, if you look closely at it, you can see how uh, it's going one, and then two, and then three, five, eight, thirteen, twenty-one. Uh, so that's the Fibonacci sequence. Question is now, I'd like you to write. So how how is this program going to work, right? Um, it's going to have to, we're going to have to, let's call it fib, and it, we're going to have an integer, we're going to send an integer n to it, and um, it's going to return a, um, a sequence of numbers, okay, or, well, um, it doesn't need to return, actually, let's just make it print the numbers, okay. Because I we don't we, we don't really know how to um, we haven't learned list uh, so let's say we haven't learned about too much about list so let's go input um, say how many Fibonacci numbers to print okay and then we would go fib, uh, well, we're going to have to use this here, and then we'll go fib x. Okay? Um, but obviously this is going to be a string, so maybe we should go int. Okay? And so now your objective is to write a, a function called fib that will print out. So, for example, if I said, uh, 
if I said 3, then it should print out, um, well, where should we start from? Uh, I guess we could start from, z from 0. So if I said 3, then it would print out uh, these ones. If I said 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, then it would print all the ones there up to including 13. Okay? So pause the video now, give it a shot, and see if you can actually uh, write the Fibonacci sequence, or a function that returns a specific number of, prints out a specific number of them. Good luck. Pause the video. All right, we're back. So um, let's do the solution here. Um, here is a program which I, I, I just wrote this, and um, maybe it should work. I know it's not. I know why it's not going to work, but I'm thinking a lot of you guys probably tried this. So let's start the. Okay, we're back to the solution. Um, so I just got to say, listen, we can't really do a Fibonacci number less than 2 because 0 and 1 are the, are the two numbers that start out the sequence. Without 0 and 1, we have nothing. Okay, so I'm going to print out the 0 and I'm going to print out the 1. Then I'm going to go into a loop Notice here n minus 2. So if n is 2, in other words, if we say, you know, print out two Fibonacci numbers, this is going to be 2 minus 2, which is 0. So this loop won't even happen, which is fine. Perfect. But what if we want more? So, you know, um, I could put the numbers here, right? 0, 1, 1, uh, 2, 3, uh, 5, 8, right, and so on. Now, we're going into a loop, and you notice each time the previous number becomes the next one. So if I'm here, so think about it this way. If this is A and this is B, then the next AB is this. Then the next AB is this. So therefore, notice here, the new A is the old B. Again, here, the new A is the old B. Again, here, the new A is the old B. So if I say A equals B, that's perfect. So now what's the new B? Well, the new B is equal to the old A plus B, right? Just like this B here is equal to the old A plus B. The problem is that on line 8, we've destroyed the old A. Because if we now do B equals a plus B, well, what's this A? This A is just simply B, so this becomes B equals B plus B, or B equals 2 times B. That's not going to work. So in essence, we're losing a piece of information on line 8, but we need to keep it. So in order to do this, we're going to need a temporary variable. So what I'm going to say before I do that is I'll say old A is equal to A. Now I'll say A equals B. And then I'll say B is equal to old A plus B. By the way, if I, if I run this, you know, Without this, let's just see what it does. If I, if I run this, let's just see what it does. How many Fibonacci numbers? Let's say we want five. Um, oh, right, the print doesn't have the thing. So let's, let's fix this here. Uh, let's go comma, end equals a space. Let's run it again. How many numbers? Five. And that's not right. 
uh, the four isn't correct, okay, and and neither is the, you know, uh, and neither is the two, okay. So that that's wrong. So let's fix this by going. Okay, let's make an old a, and now let's change the the a. But we've saved it here in old a in a temporary variable, and now we'll say this is equal to the old a plus b, okay. Now let's run it, and let's see what happens. How many numbers? Let's say five. And that looks pretty good. Uh, let's, let's make more. How about seven numbers? Five, seven numbers. Yay! Zero, one, one, two, three, five, eight. It works. So that's the solution, is basically having a temporary variable. However, listen, I want to show you something that Python can do. So this whole thing here, I'm going to take it out. And instead of doing that, I'm going to do a double assignment. Ready? Watch this. A comma B equals. Now what should A be equal to? Well, A should equal be equal to B. And what should B be equal to? A plus B. You can actually do a double assignment. And now you don't need a temporary variable. So look what I'm doing. I'm just I'm doing the same thing I did originally, right? So it's like saying a equals b. So the first item before the comma is equal to the first item before the comma. So a equals b. And then the second item, b equals a plus b. Let's run that. 7. And it still works perfectly. But I would say that this line 13 is very unintuitive for someone who has never used Python before. It's much easier to understand. Well, perhaps it's easy to understand, but it's uh, most programmers won't realize that, that you can actually do something like that. But using a temporary variable is another solution as well. So thanks for watching, and that's the end of today.